the final, I won't even bring that slide up, is the scale issue. Um, I've been lucky in that, well, I've been lucky, but some of my clients necessar haven't necessarily been lucky. Um, and I haven't hit massive scale issues. But one of the things that um, you need to be aware of is because of Facebook's technical requirements, um, there's more load. And because of the viral nature of some of these things, there's anecdotal stories of going around of people you know, scrounging extra servers because their application took off. And you either run with that or you essentially you've, you've failed. You're, um, the, the evidence seems to be that the, the minute there's so many apps, the minute that your app screws up, people are off. So right at the birth of your application, if you are getting that wrong, that is essentially going to be game over. Um, so that's kind of a, a how long is a piece of string question. Um, and yeah, it's a hard one because do you, you know, the hard part of most of these applications isn't in the development end of things, it's in the business and marketing end of things. So how much do you invest in the development in order to scale the application that may not necessarily ever need the scale that you just prepared it for? Um, luckily, I, I don't have my business hat on today, so I don't have to answer that question. Um, um, but yeah, there, there's a number of a number of issues technically that you you need to look out for in, in those terms, of that kind of level. The very base that I use with images is um, Amazon S3 or similar storage network. Um, it's going to give you a little bit of buffer for for an application, but yeah, that's that's a, a hard challenge and a good challenge to have. Um, that's the end of my formal part of my presentation. So, if there are any questions on development or other type things. Please join me in thanking Toby Heady. <laughs> Thanks, Toby. Uh, and I noticed a very uh, shameless plug for Prefabricator. Yes, indeed. How are you, how are you commercialising that, um, Toby? And, um, no idea. How much no. venture capitalist money do you need? <laughs> no, let's, let's shamelessly uh, ask that question of you. Um, well, I, that, that tool's basically my response to the challenges I've faced. Um, it's now the core platform for the, the work that I'm, I'm doing for various clients. So that's, that's pr predominantly how, it's, how I'm using it. I've solved some of these problems from a, my own technical perspective. So um, as a good developer, I'm very lazy. So I want to do that once and now carry that through into, into what I've done. Um, but also I'm noticing a lot of the people I'm talking to, they're, they want to be inside Facebook. They want to, they kn there's a lot of buzz, there's a lot of hype. They know they need to do something. But then what, what, what is that? What does it look like? How do you go about testing Facebook? Um, and because I think yeah, it's incredible that it's an open platform, but at the same time, it's not quite as simple as throwing up a web page and seeing, seeing what happens. You, you need a little bit more investment up front, and there's a real tension, I think, at the moment of how, how the hell do we crack it? Um, the, other, the other thing I think that's going on, which, which is sort of going back to the question you, you were asking, you know, how... How do we get this success? Like, what, what is, what is the point of um, of even sort of starting down this path? And I think some of it needs to be, um, yeah, it's it's playing in a sense in the environment, um, and it may be just a bunch of different techniques. Um, if you have an existing site or system or application, you know, the first step is to get that inside Facebook in the simplest way possible. And if you're already in Facebook and your people in your company are in Facebook, um, and if they're not, they should be, and then 
you instantly have a little network there already of, you know, if you've got a company of 10 people and maybe each one of them has 100 friends, well, that's a network that now your application is going to start being pushed out to. And I think some of this can start quite small, um, but some of the big brands like National Bank just had, um, NAB as they're now called, sorry, sorry brand manager. Um, Develop hat, I'm naturally immune. Um, they just had a campaign that, that sort of has gone through with flash game and those kind of things. Um, and it didn't seem to have any outside um, marketing spend. They, w they weren't advertising that. It was just purely viral within the Facebook thing. And that showed up on quite a few, you know, the, the word I'm hearing is that's, that was a pretty successful campaign. And I'm hearing from a lot of other um, brand managers and ad agency people who are saying, we want that. And you're like, okay. Um, so there's, there's a real sort of movement on that front, um, which didn't answer the question at all. But No, I, um, want, a, I want a dollar figure for prefabricator <laughs> for the venture capitalist watching. Um, are there any questions from the floor for Toby before we go into our break? Um, see this gentleman at the back. Yeah, just a quick one. Yep, it's on. With regards, um, well, two actually. Uh, the, I guess the execution model. Um, a user interacts with the page on Facebook. That results in an HTTP HTTP request ending up at your server. Yep. And your response is an HTTP response payload of F FBML. Is that yep. correct? Um, yeah, basically. Generally? H the Where's the picture? Okay. Um, so basically when the user goes to your application, it's the canvas. Mm -hmm. um, so that's your yeah, apps.facebook slash app name. And basically it's a get request to your app. Mm -hmm. um, from your app's perspective, the FBML you're pushing out is just a normal page. Yep. So that could be a PHP script or a static H, you know, the, HTML the page. The contents of that response is something that still has to be interpreted by something else. Yeah, so yeah. what's happening then is Facebook, the Facebook engine's taking that FBML and parsing it and turning it into the HTML that's seen yep. on the Facebook end of things. So one of the, the advantages of that is you can tell clients that they can have any branding they like as long as it's blue and grey, mm -hmm. which um, drives marketing people a bit mental. But anyway. Um, but yeah, FBML is both good and bad because you can do a single tag that is essentially going to be the user image in, a, in the Facebook standard profile box mm -hmm. or it's the pull down with the list, you know, the list of all their friends and to you it's one line of code and Facebook's magically sorting all of that out. So most of that stuff you can do, um, you can use, instead of a canvas, you can use a frame and to do a more traditional app. Um, but every single one of those features then you need to implement. Yep. So if you want to pull a drop down of someone's list of friends, it's a matter then of you going to the API, saying to Facebook, hey, what's their friends? Yep. Then getting all those names. So there's a round. Yeah. So um, FBML, if you can get away with it, will end up saving you a ton of time just in terms of making the look and feel sit inside Facebook in a neat way. But that, that's ultimately then, I guess, served from within the Facebook yeah. domain. Yeah. Um, and this is part of the pain of testing and developing yeah. for Facebook. You're always sort of one step removed from any change you make. You have to see it rendered by Facebook before you realise how yeah. wrong you were. Um, or right, you know, that's normal developers. Yeah, I'm sure. walking compiler. You um, mentioned about handles and, and caching and so on. So I, there are resources that Facebook will cache for you. Yeah. So subsequent requests for cached resources wouldn't result in requests to your server? That's exactly right. So you wouldn't put something that was, say, needing to be monitored for analytical purposes or whatever? You wouldn't cache something like that? That's right. The, this is the stats that Facebook provides on the profile level are about the only um, thing you're going to get because yep. all of the profile displays happen inside Facebook. Um, and all of that data is pushed from your app rather than the being a live um, request. Mm -hmm. So on the 